Here we are at number 18 Gifford Crescent, the site of Sri Lanka's most prestigious and renowned theatre, the Lionel Went. Come with me. The Lionel Went Arts Centre opened in 1953 and was built largely by the renowned artist Harold Pires in memory of Lionel Went, a barrister who became an iconic photographer and virtuosic pianist. The building is on the site of Ben's former residence, Alborada, which in Spanish means dawning of the day. And it is here that countless artists in music, theatre, dance and the visual arts have seen the dawn of their careers. We were intrigued to find out that Lionel Bent buried a scroll in the foundations of Alborada. Thanks to the trustees of the Lionel Went, we are able to share some of what the scroll says with you. And it reads, May all honest endeavour in the service of beauty flourish therein, and win its reward of inward content and the peace that is, only in ceaseless effort. The Went is loved by all, and is usually busy with exhibitions and productions. But because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the corridors are empty, and electricity has been cut off to various parts of the building. The silence is... Eerie. But we're here to look for someone, and we must go on. Theatre cultures have their own set of superstitions. The UK, for example, starts the tradition of never mentioning William Shakespeare's bloody tragedy. Not much, not much. Don't mention it. As you can see, here too we don't mention it for fear of bad luck. But the Lionel Went has its own superstition. Uh, Dude. The hell? So it's pretty dark. Can you put like a torch on or something? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Torch. No, watch it, watch it, watch it. Yeah, yeah. I. So where was I? Right. So the Lionel Vent has its own superstition. Auntie Iris. But unlike Shakespeare's play, Auntie Iris is a really benign soul. She was a former manager of the Lionel Vent and completely devoted to the place. Some people have claimed to see her, and others call on her name in times of stress, which here can be quite a lot. But unless you disrespect space or set a fire on stage, you really have nothing to worry about. All right now, do the thing. Do the thing! Here's the woman we're here to meet, Dilrukshi Ramukwella, who's been manager of the Lionel Wenz Arts Centre since 2008. Hi, Dilrukshi. Hi, hi, Andre. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Thank you for doing this for us. Oh, no problem. Can you tell us a little bit about what's happening here? It's a bit yes, of a drastic a change. Yes, at the moment, we are waiting for the electricity board to come. And as you can see that the old uh, control, I mean, you can't say it's a control panel, mm -hmm. but uh, that mess there, the lights, like, oh, that was ancient. Okay. Uh, done in the 50s. So we, are changed, we have changed it to a modern uh, board. Digital lights. 
So, and from there we'll know what is going on. I see. Yeah, everything, uh, the three phase, all about electricity. So you're rewiring the entire place? Uh, we have been doing it. It's a, it was started way back in 2010. Mm -hmm. So we were doing it in small little bits, but to do the major thing here, the biggest one, you need to close the theater. I see. So we made use of this uh, right. time to do the changeover. So you spent the entire time while theaters are closed, just rewiring and revamping the entire okay. space. Yes. That's, That's wonderful. Uh, well, uh, blessing in disguise, otherwise we, you know how busy we are all the time. Yes. We cannot afford to close the theater for uh, even a month. Mm -hmm. We actually need about three months to do this. Three months. Yeah. So we started in May and now completed. Right. Yeah. How much longer will it take to uh, close just the Just the finishing touches. We are actually waiting for the electricity board to come and fix that uh, big meter here. Then we are done and to cover up all this. You are planning a grand um, festival of the arts in November. Could you tell us a little more about that? Uh, yes, we are planning to have a festival of two weeks of uh, theatre with all three languages, in, in all three languages. Uh, we are going to get people from Jackna, which is a very rare opportunity. Mm -hmm. Uh, for them and for, for our local audience also. And uh, theatre, uh, dance, music, all three. Uh, in two weeks, like for running for two weeks, which will be a real treat for everybody. Yes. Unfortunately, with this, uh, it's everything is so very uncertain now. So we probably might not be able to have it? Might not be able to have it this year, yes. And why November specifically? Uh, because Lanovin's birthday is in. Uh, December, but yeah. December is very heavy with all sorts of things, so that's why we all just have it in November. And people are more of getting ready for Christmas in December, so we thought November would be a better month to have it. And this would be the 120th birthday. 120th birthday anniversary of Planet Earth. Last time we had the 110th in 2010. Okay, that's fantastic. As theatre practitioners, we're all really eager to know when the event might reopen its uh, theatre and gallery spaces. Most likely will be in October after we finish all the maintenance work uh, and we are fixing a new AC, which takes right. a lot of long, long time to do it. And the galleries may we might uh, open in September. Do you currently have any bookings for that time? Yes, we have few bookings for, not like before, of mm -hmm. course, uh, in November and December. Could you tell us a bit about those bookings, if it's possible? Uh, a school, school booking, yeah, yes. They are quite positive. But the only thing is, and we have a, the children's festival, the Singhala Theatre Festival in happening in December. Okay. With this 50% capacity is in like uh, they're insisting on 50% capacity, the authorities. Okay. So the government has asked that we only uh, seat 50% of 50%, the entire crowd? Yes. If we have uh, one seat away, we should get about uh, 300. But if it is two seats away, it's going to be much less than the... I'd like to go back a bit and talk about um, them asking you all to reopen at 50% capacity. I think if we look around and we look at social and physical distancing when it comes to theatre spaces and entertainment spaces, a lot of people have spoken about how it should be 30% uh, capacity to be actually safe. Um, is that anything they've talked to you all about, the performance board? Uh, well, I don't know about the other theatres, but we were not informed at all, in nothing at all. And we are privately talking to other theatres mm -hmm. and what is, how are you all doing, what is the procedure. Uh, that kind of thing, but we were not officially informed. So the performance board hasn't given you all um, specific guidelines on reopening or not any sort of structure? No, not that I know of. Uh, do you think theatre organisations should maybe come together to create a stronger dialogue and to maybe push policy and, and get more information coming down from the government to help uh, better public safety processes? Yes, I think that would be great. We should do that. If the government is not giving us guidelines, how main I mean, with the safety of the audience, safety of the 
uh, cast and the crew, those things, I mean, if the theatre organisations get together and have a discussion, that will be great. I mean, we are prepared to initiate that. Do you have a message you'd like to give to theatre goers and theatre companies once things reopen here? Yes, I would like to tell the general public, the theatre goers, uh, producers, to be mindful of each other at this situation. Uh, if you are sick, please stay at home. I know you are waiting to get back to theatre. But think of the others and, and your safety, the public safety is, is very important to us. I believe you have a reading from us for a, a book that means a lot to you. Yes, I was reading this book by Ohan Pamuk, Istanbul, Memories and, and the City. Okay, it goes like this. Uh, I chose this to read out because it's relevant to the, the Lionel went as you walk in mm -hmm. the, the poi. It reminds me of the poi actually. There was not a single surface in my grandmother's sitting room that wasn't covered with frames of all sizes. The most imposing were two enormous portraits that hung over the never used fireplace. One was a retouched photograph of my grandmother and the other of my grandfather who died in 1934. From the way the pictures were positioned on the wall and the way my grandparents had been posed, uh, anyone walking into this museum room to meet their haughty gaze would know at once the story began with them. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Irukshi, for having us. Thank you for all this. Thank you for having me as well. Oh, no. We really look forward to coming back to the event. It's like home for many yes, of us. it is home for all of you. And uh, it is open for everyone, public space. And I hope we can finish all the work and give a brand new theatre in uh, starting in October. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.